Caching is storing data in a location different than the location of original data so that it is faster to access data from this new location. Here in this simple example, we have a client that interacts with the server which interacts with the database. You can have caching at client level so that the client doesn't have to go to the server to retrieve it. Similarly, you can have cache at the server level. That is, you may design the system so that server will just call the database once and cache the data at the server level. Instead of having the cache at the server level, you can also have a cache between the server and database. In fact, you can have caching even at the hardware level. For example, any modern day computer builds CPU caches at the CPU level, which helps it to make it faster retrieval of data from memory. Understanding of hardware level caching is however out of scope for most software engineers. It's just good to know that caching is done at different levels in a system. Let's check out some of the practical examples where caching can be helpful. One of the most common use cases when caching is helpful is when you are expecting many network calls and you want to avoid or minimize those network calls. As an example, here I have got a client, a server and a database. The clients can make requests to the server and the server can make requests to the database. The database will return stuff to the server and the server will return stuff to the client. And finally, the client will be able to do stuff for the data it requested. Most often, client, server and database are separate machines. It's a network call when a client is calling server or server is calling the database and vice versa. By caching the results of the network operation, you can speed up the operation. So if this client has to make a data request with a cache in place, it doesn't have to request a call all the way to the database. And like I mentioned earlier, you can have cache at the client level or the server level. Another example where caching can help is when you're doing a very computationally expensive operation. Here, it's not the network request which you are trying to avoid, but an operation which takes long time to process by the server. So when the client makes a call to the server, the server takes really long time to process a request. Maybe the server is performing a very long or complex algorithm with poor time complexity, and then returning the result to the client. You may want to cache that result so that you don't want to request the server to compute this long operation multiple times again and again. Be it the case of network calls or computationally long operations, the goal of caching is to speed up the system. But speeding up the system is not the only goal of caching. In real life, we normally have many clients and many servers. And imagine all these servers are hitting the database with some network request. For example, a million users or clients are trying to view Instagram profile of a popular celebrity. You will use caching here not to increase the speed of the individual network request, but you want to prevent your database from getting overloaded. So you would use caching to not to have to read from the database so many times. So in this case, you will have a single cache between your server and database. And all the requests from the server will first go to the single cache. Or maybe each server will have its own individual cache by storing the Instagram profile of the celebrity in memory and avoiding so many reads from the database. These are three very good examples of when you want to use caching in a system. To speed up operations by reducing network calls, speeding of computationally long operation by caching results, or prevent data hotspots when million users are trying to get specific data. So far, we have only seen examples of caching where only data needs to be read, not data which needs to be written. Let's take an example of an application such as Facebook or Twitter, where users can read, write, and edit their post. So here we have a client or browser that users are interacting with. We then have a server, so when the user is writing posts, the client requests the server to write the post, and the posts are then stored in the database. Now, if you want to cache those posts, that is at the server level, in memory, you now have two sources of truth, both in the database and here in your server. So basically now when the user writes a post, the client first makes a network request to the server. The server makes a network request to the database, stores the post in the database, which you will display on the web page, and somehow the post will get stored in the cache. Now that you have two sources of truth, so how do you deal with these two sources of truth? And how can you tell when to write to the cache, when to write to the database? Do you do it at the same time? Do not do it at the same time? Well, we have two popular types of caching systems, write-through cache and write-back cache. In a write-through cache, when you make an edit to a piece of data, the system will write the data both in the cache and in the main source of truth, which is the database at the same time. So here you have a post. The post is stored in the database and also in the cache. The user now decides to edit their post. 
So the client will make a network request to the server and the server will first override whatever is there in the cache and then will also make a request to the database and update the database. That way, the cache and the database will always be in sync. The downside of this is that now you have to always go to the database. So you are not really able to minimize the network calls here. Which brings us to the second popular type of cache, the write back cache. So now when the user wants to edit their post, the client sends a request to the server and the server will only update the cache and immediately send the response back to the client without touching the database. So now your cache will become out of sync with the database. However, behind the scenes, your system will update the database with the cache asynchronously, which can be done in different ways, maybe randomly or on a scheduled basis. That is every 30 seconds or every five minutes, depending upon your use case. The point is, whenever the user is making a network request to write or edit a post, in our example, only the cache will be updated and the database will be updated asynchronously at a later time. Things can however get trickier and interesting when you're dealing with large scale systems, such as YouTube or Facebook. We will explore some of them in our future videos. Meanwhile, if you have found this video informative, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing.